It's time for Track Talk on News Talk 1240 WHBU and the new 103.7 FM and on Muncie Sports Station, 102.9 FM and 1340 AM. Here's Rick and Gary with Anderson Speedway's Track Talk. <laughs> Good evening. <laughs> Welcome to Track Talk. Rick Dawson, Gary Monk, we are at the Mountains Mall Special Event Studio. What a, a gorgeous day. A beautiful Tuesday evening. I think it's got 70s. Side day, Kenny, Kenny was at the track today. Uh-huh. I've looked at, at the temperature. It was 75. Oh, my gosh. And I talked to Murph down in Florida uh, this afternoon. About an hour after that, it was 77 down there. So we're as warm as Florida right now. Pretty much. Wow. And I'm in the foreseeable future, it looks really good. Does this not get you in the mood for getting cars out on that track? It gets me in the mood to get outdoors. Yes. I can tell you that. It's great outside. We are Finally. going to truck. We're going to have trucks. We are going to have cars on the track are. this Saturday afternoon. Yes. If you're not doing anything, come out and watch the cars. It doesn't cost anything to watch. What you need to do is if you're not going to go in the pits with the cars, you're welcome to come in the pit gate, and uh, we'll direct you to the pit bleachers. You're out of harm's way there and can watch the watch. Uh, cars practice. We'll open the pit gates at noon and practice from 1 to 4. I'm going to have a lot of cars out I there. I have a feeling we will. If it's, I think what's what they, I seen mid 60s, close to 70 on Saturday. Yes. So yeah. rain is coming in, um, not as much now as they said originally. That's good. Uh, tomorrow evening and Thursday may have a few storms. Nothing major they're saying, but it looks like it's going to start drying out a little bit on Friday. And they're saying scattered, but I don't think we're going to get much on Saturday. That's so good. I think we're going to race. Kenny's been out there. Uh, all the, both days this week, and uh, it's the track's in not bad shape Good. for for the winter we had. It's uh, the sump pump is drained the back stretch, so we don't have any weepers. The pits, the back pits are dry, so we're ready to put some race so cars. So we've on got the race we got track. water draining, and we're we're good to go. We're ready. We do. <coughs> we got a couple of announcements to make. Okay. Um, I think real earth-shattering, and this will make all of our listeners happy, I'm sure. But uh, Track Talk has been renewed for another year. Yay! Uh, with our host stations, you know, with the Wolf Boom stations. All over the country and all over the world. All over the country, all over the world. Yes. <laughs> that sound like a, a minor bird. <laughs> that or an echo. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Wolf Boom stations, and Wade, you may not know this yet, but you probably assumed it, the Wolf Boom stations will be broadcasting the Pay less little 500 again this year, along with qualifications on Thursday and Friday. Wow, good deal. So what do you think about that, Wade? Got him off guard. He didn't know which do, button to he push. He must be doing something else. <laughs> Wade has disappeared. He has. <laughs> Wade Stokes, our producer out in the cornfield. Many, many there. years. We, we'll talk about racing here in a little bit, but did something that I'd never done before last night. Ate at St. Elmo's Steakhouse. Did you really? I think this was a special occasion, though, wasn't it? Well, it was. Uh, Lauren's birthday was Friday, and last year at the Black and White Gala out the track for the Rotary Club, in these uh, in the live auction, I bought uh, four tickets to the Pacer game. For, you obviously seen a good game last night. What I seen as far as the uh, the final, but I guess it went down to the wire. If you like NBA games, I mean, I didn't get too excited, you know, watching it because I think NBA's. It's not totally phony, but it's funny how a team plays as hard as the Pacers did all night long, and they played good the whole game. But all of a sudden, after a 16-point lead, it goes down to four, and you watch the calls the referees make. It's uh, They wanted to make it close. But they played uh, really good. I mean, uh, George Hill and, and Paul. Uh, or not, Paul George and Paul George Hill. George, the whole team did a good job. We had great seats. These seats uh, were donated uh, last year to the auction by Ivy Tech mm. and uh, Tom and Bobette Snyder, and they're they're like ninth row right behind the Pacer bench. Oh, you're kidding! To, to my right sat uh, Donnie Walsh and Larry Bird, um, and I didn't know, and I didn't get down to talk to them, but uh, Bill Gaither and uh, Judge Carroll uh-huh. sat just down from us. Oh, cool! And, uh, uh, good friend Jill and Maya's husband, and their tickets are just right down there. I mean, we were down there with the with the elite. Good. Well, good Got to deal. go into that fancy restaurant downstairs <laughs> before the game the whole nine yards, but we weren't really hungry. Yeah. How was St. Elmo's? St. Elmo's. If you, Is it everything? If you ever they... get the chance to go, it's needed. It sets you back into the 
30s and 40s, you can see how it used to be a speakeasy or whatever. The steaks are everything they've been advertised. I had a play, mm -hmm. and it was, you could almost cut it with a fork, and it was juicy and tender and, and cooked perfect. I like my steaks, pink, mm -hmm. no juice, no right. red juice coming out of it. <laughs> it was cooked perfect. Had uh, And had some of their famous shrimp cocktail, cocktail. which will clean your sinuses. <laughs> And then topped it off with some creme brulee. Sound like you had a nice dinner. Had a good family dinner good. with uh, Lauren and Dan and and my wife Brenda, and then uh, walked over and we walked everywhere we went. So I, I thought nice. about you because when they were announcing uh, when Peyton Manning announced his retirement yesterday, he talked about St. Elmo's. And I thought, hmm, yep, it's the place where uh, Rick and the family are at right now. Yeah, <laughs> it was. It's good if you ever get the chance to go to St. Elmo's. I highly. Highly recommend it. And go to a Pacer game, too. Take your pocketbook because it's a little, if you do any eating or drinking and then you buy your seed, it can get a little right. salty. But It's uh, always good entertainment. It's, it's, good, it's good family entertainment. Yes. they got something going on all the time during the timeouts and the halftime. And really entertaining. Of course, Boomer was there. and um, It was just a just a fun evening. Look forward to it. And did you go down and have any words with uh, Mr. Bird? Mr. Walsh. I didn't. They were they were pretty intense <laughs> yeah. on on the game and in and out pretty quick. Okay. So, I mean, he didn't even wave at me, which <laughs> a celebrity like you, and he didn't even acknowledge you. Wow. <laughs> but uh, we had we had a good time. So good. do that. Uh, the uh, Speedway night or the Motorsports night at the Fuel game, Indy Fuel game Saturday night went real well. I hear. Seeing Ken De La Bastide. Today at the Rotary Club, and he was down there. We had four drivers down there doing autographs, and it's a big night down at the Indy Fuel game. Anderson Speedway night at Indy Fuel is on Friday, April the 8th, so you want to mark your calendar. We went that. to that last year, and it was a blast. Had a great time. A lot of drivers there, and had a lot of fun. They're going to have uh, they're going to have the tricycle races again. One of the fans will be able to compete against one of our drivers. Last year it was Jacob Wilson. Yes. They also are putting together a video for the big screen to have a contest with the fans with three of our sprint cars. And they actually take pictures of a, the real sprint cars. Oh, I know that'd be cool. Jacob's car, uh, Chris Wyndham's car, and I think Brian Gerster's car. Okay. going to be in that so the fan can decide which car is going to win and win a, win be, a gift pack. So That'll be fun. That'll be a fun night, April the 8th, down at uh, the Coliseum at the State Fairgrounds. But anyway, uh, back to racing. I mean back. Well, anyway, well, get, let's kind of get back to the okay. back to racing, racing. All right. um, we've got practice coming up. Well, we had our uh, uh, staff meeting this past Saturday night with our safety crew and stuff. They're all fired up and ready to get at it. And we had almost uh, twenty. Yeah. There, didn't so, we? Uh, and we still got more. Ate that, all the pizza. Yeah, we got more that uh, uh, couldn't be there because of uh, obligations, family obligations, or job. But uh, they'll be there here in the course of the next couple of weeks but uh, everybody's fired up from the from the track crew side and safety side and they're ready to go at it so and then uh, a lot of them will be out there this saturday for practice from uh, one to four yeah we do we do a lot a lot of extensive training with our safety crews uh, this this weekend i think we're going to have a car out there and ed faust our safety director is going to uh, mm -hmm. to do some instructions on extractions right and uh and how to use the jaws of life actually there is a little engineering that goes into you. You know, when you got a driver in the car like that, you don't, you don't just go and just start cutting the car apart, depending upon how it's rested, because you could actually do more damage right. than, than, uh, than not. So. Uh. But I think I think our guys do a good job. Uh, granted, we we do this to kind of get everybody back into the into the swing of things. I know we've all been out of it since December, and uh, we'll all be a little rusty, but we'll we'll have it down pat here when we're ready to go racing and and. Uh, We'll be ready to go. Good deal. Yeah. Now what do you want to talk about? <laughs> well, you said you had a few things to bring up, so I was just kind of... I did. Yeah. We That's renewed the said. show for yeah. for another year, doing the little 500. We're working with uh, the radio station on some uh, promotional nights and events. Um I'm trying to think of what else that I need to talk well, about. Well, while we fill out the rest of the month of March of what our schedule is like, we got another practice on... I spent March the better the, part of the morning like, doing yes. the event schedules. <laughs> I think you've sent me well, about three months worth right now. I, did, that I need to look at. How's, how's that for being ahead of the game? Yeah. April, May's, and June's, and it just kind of reiterates what and refamiliarizes me on on the events that we've got coming up. 
and uh, we got some good shows. We do, we do. We've got uh, we got opening night, obviously, two weeks from this Saturday, right? And with our uh, mechanical engine lake models, and I, can't I think it's the Pro Compacts and the Thunder Cars. Yes, Thunder okay. Cars. It's the their debut. And then the next week we got Outlaw Figure Eights. We do. So. And those guys, will, I think, will be ready to go at it because they're not racing anywhere just yet. So those guys will be ready to get at it as well, too. Got a call about that today So from a competitor. Good. So going to get that information out tomorrow. And then we've got the CRA Street Stocks coming in next month. And then in May, and the and the Sierra Atlanta Mile Sportsman's too, I believe, are coming not next, next month. month. Oh, not in not in. That's April? why I was getting to May first that, before you jumped in. Ah, uh, I was talking about the Sportsman, not the Supers. I know. But, okay. The Supers come in May also. Gotcha. Okay. They I need to have a schedule in front of me. <laughs> it, with the new race director for the Sierra Street Stocks and Sportsman races, I don't know if Daniel and Megan have moved yet or not, but. It's supposed to been this month. We announced it? earlier that Daniel Hart was retiring from CRA. So uh, Brian Duncan, who you'll recognize as the flagman for the Super Series, right. is their new race director for their sportsmen and street stocks. I'm looking forward to working with, and he'll, with Brian. He'll uh, start his duties at, at Anderson Speedway, I believe, next month, won't he? Yes. Yeah. He will. That's what I was getting at. Oh, oh, oh I'll let you talk then. I'll stay quiet. <laughs> <laughs> The end of next month, we have the the Glenn Nibel Classic again. I'm not sure how many years this is, but I think we're maybe closing in on 14 or 15 years. I would think so, yes. With uh, the Anderson Speedway Sprint Cars, which are the non-wing pavement uh, little 500 rule cars. That's That'll be a big race the end of next so, month. Yes. And then we get into the month of May, and we got the CRA Super Series. we got the CRA Sportsman coming in. we got our Spring Championship Night. And then the Payless Little 500 the last weekend in May again this year. So big event going on down at the Speedway tomorrow down at Indianapolis Motor Speedway. They're having uh, uh, motorsports people in the state or whatever. They're having a big luncheon and uh, tour of the Speedway and everything just to familiarize everybody with what's going on with the 100th anniversary of the oh, race. Oh, great. Actually, a... Uh, Former racer, former Little 500 competitor, um, <laughs> right? Levi Jones is kind of spearheading that committee down there for the Speedway, so it'd be kind of neat to see him again. Cool. And uh, hear what all they've got to say. So, so I take it you're going to going. You've been invited to that? No. Yes, we have been. Invited oh, okay. To it. Okay. So, I know Amy's going down, and I'm going to try my best to get get down there at least for the luncheon, so I can see the folks. Right. But we have a lot of stuff going on at the track. Yes, we do. I've ordered the trophies today for the first three months. Wow. And uh, so we can get ready to start getting the outside of the track ready for, for race fans in a couple of weeks. Yes. It really doesn't look that bad. I mean, you, it's it's got a little weather to it from the winter, yes, but nothing uh, like it could have been from some of the harsh winters we've had in the past. So Paint will fix most yes, of it. Yes, absolutely. So, uh Folks from Big Joe's Event Services was out there today getting the, uh, they were working on the pit trailer today, so they're getting all geared up and ready to go. I've got a meeting tomorrow with, with Chuck on some new ideas that he wants to try out the track, so I'm going to talk to him tomorrow. We've got, um, what else have we got going out there? Just well, you're out there more than I am, so <laughs> you tell me. <laughs> Can you tell I didn't prepare very well this evening? Well, it's been busy. It's been busy trying to get ready for uh, practice and then for our first opening night. Or After for our opening Jay night. listens to this show, he may not renew our contract Who's for that? another year. Jay Child. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, he will. Uh, Wolf Boom Station do a great job, and they're growing. Um, I'm actually on Doug Zook's morning show every Thursday morning, and we'll begin this week, but not for as long because that quarter will nine on thursday nobody really cares about this but i gotta have a root canal so i'm not i'm not looking forward to thursday very much so you you will not be able to talk about you on thursday will you thursday afternoon yeah don't know i hope it'll be better than what it is now i'm sure though that's probably the only time i've ever been around you that you haven't had something to say or was able to say something <laughs> we're going to take a quick quick break <laughs> we're going to get our thoughts together and we're going to talk intelligently about racing when we come back you're listening to anderson speedway's track talk heart attack 
stroke, serious injury. A sudden health crisis can happen to anyone at any time. So when bad things happen, choose good people. St. Vincent Anderson Regional Hospital has the area's most advanced emergency care with a state-designated level three trauma center, an internationally accredited chest pain center for heart attack patients, and advanced certification for primary stroke care. We have all the resources to deliver the care you need for any serious or life-threatening emergency. St. Vincent Anderson Regional is the only emergency department in the area with an on-site helicopter. And our $27 million state-of-the-art surgery pavilion opens later this year. Bad things can happen to anyone. Thankfully, good people are ready to help. Choose emergency care from St. Vincent Anderson Regional, the spirit of caring. Visit stvincent.org slash Anderson Regional to learn more. Honey, stop! Oh my gosh, that's Diggity's back there. You mean the new Diggity's Frozen Treat Factory? I heard it's unbelievable. Everybody's talking about it. They have everything yummy. Yeah, I heard they have ice cream, yogurt, custard, sorbet. And gelato, plus fruit smoothies, and that's just the beginning. I heard Diggity's has over 250 toppings, not 30 or 40 like those other places. And you can even get the candy to go separately. We can eat outside on their huge patio by the fire, too. Okay, let's see. Frozen yogurt, ice cream, custard, sorbet, and gelato with 250 toppings or a plain old frozen yogurt shop with limited toppings? <laughs> Diggity's, Diggity's it is! Diggity's wants to cater your event. Diggity's can set up at your event inside or out and provide delicious smoothies, frozen cappuccinos, candies, and frozen treats to your guests. Diggity's is perfect for weddings, company picnics, group outings, sporting events, festivals, you name it, just call Diggity's. 765-393-0033 today for more information. Motav Incorporated, where imagination is the only limitation. We serve residential, commercial, industrial, and municipal customers as your metals warehouse and fabrication center. We do all types of fabrication using the latest technology with unmatched speed, accuracy, and durability on any substrate. Our ornamental division handles all types of interior and exterior work, including rails, fences, gates, and more. So contact us at mofabbing.com to fabricate your dreams of tomorrow today. This program is a presentation by Anderson Speedway. The content contained in this program is that of the host and guests, and not this station. That would be Stevie Ray Vaughan. How'd I do? Oh, he that would... Would... Wait, tell, tell Gary you did not tell me who that was going to be. <laughs> okay. That could have been anybody. It could have been anybody. You probably don't even remember Stevie. Yeah, right that's long. before my time. He was really good <laughs> with the guitar. Some racing coming up. Obviously, uh, May the 26th, opening night at Anderson Speedway. Put March that, 26th. What did I say? May. May. March 26th is our opening night at Anderson Speedway. Then the next uh, Sunday, a week from that, is the uh, 7th Annual Cabin Fever Championships at Lucas Oil Raceway Park with the Let's see, it looks like we're going to have uh, the Vores Welding CRA Late Model Sportsman, the CRA Street Stocks, the Brewster Chicken iCar Top Speed Modified Tour, and the Vores Compact Touring Series. It's a full full group of cars there. Yeah, that's on Sunday, Sunday. April the 3rd. They kind of moved it back a week this year, didn't they? It used to be at the end of March, but I think last year it got totally uh, canceled because it was cold <laughs> i forget why you told me now there's something to do with scheduling oh was there okay Lucas oil raceway or something uh, with another series or division i'm not sure but it's going to be on april the third okay. this year great place to watch a a car race is lucas oil double header week and come to anderson saturday night see outlaw figure eight cars along with uh, a couple other divisions we got that night then go to lucas oil on sunday absolutely yeah then uh did you catch the Cup race this past weekend. I got to see a little bit of it. Uh, uh, an interesting finish, though, because I think everybody was expecting uh, Kyle Busch to win, and he was way out there, and I guess he started having felt some vibration or something in the car there and thought maybe something wrong with the right front tire. He ended up finishing fourth. Yeah, though. and then Brad Keselowski got around him, and along with uh, Jimmy Johnson, and uh, I think who got second now. I can't remember who got second. Uh, was it? Uh, oh, was it Joey Logano? It yeah, Logano. Joey Logano. Yes. So, uh, yeah, because uh, Penske came in one-two on Sunday. So, good for them. Yes. Wasn't it uh, Gibbs the week before? 
No, Gibbs won the Daytona, and okay. then Hendricks won Hendrick. the uh, one at um, Atlanta. Here? So yeah, let's keep the big guys happy. <laughs> <laughs> they were okay. They're having troubles getting cars to show I think up. They had 39 on Sunday, didn't they? They have troubles filling the stands. It looked better in Las Vegas than it did Atlanta. Yes, but it still didn't look fantastic. They're doing what this Western Swing, where now they go to Phoenix, and I think they go to Auto. Then they go to California. What's that called? Auto City, Auto, Va- Auto, Auto Value, or Auto City, or something Auto, like that. Auto Speedway. Auto, yeah. <laughs> Make their western and swing. I, and I bet out there they the stands will be tough to fill up. Uh-huh. I, I don't. There, we've talked about this a lot, and I'd like to hear our our listeners' views on this. Email me or or call the office or something. Let me know what you think. NASCAR needs to do. Maybe you're happy with it, with the way the races are. I personally am a traditional race racer, race fan. Right. And I like to see side by side close racing. The only time you have that now is sometimes in the very last lap. Right. Sometimes, and then you're, and that's only happened because usually there's been an inc- a wreck or and had a bunch or, or a Competi- a debris yellow yeah <laughs> <laughs> to bunch them up so there's a good finish but i'm i i mean the announcers can only do so much hype right i mean i do believe and i've said it before i think jeff gordon's doing a he is good, doing job a good job as a as a commentator but it's there's only so much you can hype a non-show and you kind of made the comment the other night about uh uh, what's happening to NASCAR, I think, is definitely benefiting short track racing, especially tracks like us. I've said it for mm-hmm. many, many years. I said it back in the in the late 90s and early 2000s when NASCAR was overpricing themselves out of business to the fans and to the sponsors. That's, I mean, the fans that showed, and now it's starting to show up in their sponsorships right. also. Wait until they have to replace Sprint. Let's see what they get. <laughs> uh, How long is that one, that contract, next, do you know? This is it. This is it this year. Yes, okay. and they've already said they're not renewing. So. Ah, hadn't heard that. And I'm and I'm wanting to say I heard somewhere in the neighbor of neighborhood of sixty to seventy million dollars was that sponsorship. So I don't know if that was multi year or if it was one year or three years. They've been at it what three or five years yeah. now. It might have been five or six. Okay. Years. I don't know, but anyway, it's a lot of money. Yes. But uh, the one thing that NASCAR did do was create race fans and a diversity of race fans right. uh, all over the economic scale, all over the gender scale. Uh, it's created race fans. So these these fans that they've created still have to have a racing fix, and so they're going to where they can afford it yes. and actually see good racing, and it's pushing them back to the short tracks, and we stand to uh, – to come out ahead on that whole deal. Do you think with the uh, the hundredth running coming up of the Indianapolis 500 that that will revive uh, open wheel, not only at that level but uh, open wheel as far as a sprint car, midget cars too? It's definitely not going to hurt it. Right. Sprint cars and midgets are still real strong on dirt. Yes. Uh, pavement for various reasons. Uh, pavement, sprint cars, and midgets have waned in the p- past several years. I, I believe in... Except for the little 500. Well, pay less little 500. Yes. Yes. But I believe, in, and Doug Bowles has seen it, is that they need to get, and they keep using the word grassroots, and I'll go ahead and use that even though I don't like it. They need home tracks is more like it. Or right. People you can relate to. Yes. They need that in IndyCar. But again, it's it's still, even though they've done a lot to reduce the cost of racing, to run an IndyCar is is very very expensive right <clears throat> and it's starting to show in their sponsorships too they're getting less for their primary sponsors and but the indianapolis 500 is an event it's yes. a huge event and uh i hope it always will be and the racing even though that track is very difficult to watch racing it's very difficult to race on indycar racing if you watch it's very the race across their country it's it's exciting it is and they go really, really fast. And really close at that kind of speed. Yes. And and there's some names you can relate to, but you can't. There's not an A.J. Foyt, and there's not a Bobby Unser or an Al Unser or, right. or, a, or a Bill Vukovic or you, there, these Parnelli Jones. Those names aren't there anymore. And, it, and Johnny Rutherford and Rick Mears, I mean, I can 
these are all people right. that I don't like to go back in time because that doesn't accomplish anything. But but the one thing it we could do back then was relate to these right. these drivers. Hoping with the, uh, the guest that we had on last week, Brian Clausen, we'll start to see that again because yes. being a local. Uh, same with like uh, Ed Carpenter, people mm-hmm. like that. Brian, that somebody, Brian and Ed both are both two people that you can relate to, yes. and you can go up and talk to them. Absolutely. Uh, I mean, Eli, Ilio and uh, Kanan, I mean, you know, they all look real personal and everything on TV, but where are they at with the, with the fans? Right. And, and maybe they are. I haven't been around there that much, but it just they just seem more like celebrities and superstars than they do race car drivers, it, which is great, and I don't default any of them from doing it, but... It's not helping racing when when the focus is on the celebrity and not the talent. Right, right. And not to say that they're not talented either. There's some very talented people, but there's a lot of untalented people at both levels, NASCAR and IndyCar, that have no business being in a race car. The only reason they're there is because either their family or companies or somebody has got money and put them in that seat. Right. So uh, maybe we'll this see. hundredth and then seeing those kind of drivers in it, Rick, maybe we'll see the turnaround happen. I hope so. I mean, we're, we're working with the Speedway with yes. the uh, the Payless Little 500. I mean, our problems, they have the same problems we do, only theirs are magnified a hundred or a yes. thousand times. <laughs> and we're in a very beneficial position to be able to capitalize on their mistakes and learn from their mistakes right. and do them different at our level. And uh, I think... We're going, to, we're going to have some of those drivers at some of our races this year, which I think is pretty think cool, so. so the fans can – and so they can learn how to interact with right. the fans, too. That's, that's important. Yes. But I want to remind all of our competitors, you need to get your get your memberships in, get your pit pads reserved. Those will all be available Saturday. Or Jessica, she's back from her trip is to she? Kenya. Good. Uh, today was her first day back in the office. She says she's still a little woozy from uh, – plane. she said – total of 12 or 16 hours on an airplane. Oh, my gosh. Uh, did have some breaks, but she was, she was on an airplane a long time. Had a great trip. And, Good. But she's back in, in the office every day. Get those memberships. Get those pit pads reserved. Little 500 tickets are going very, very quickly. I'm telling you, it's, it's amazing me now what's going on. One event, and we'll talk more about it next week on May the 1st, uh, the city of Anderson and Irma, which is the the Indiana uh, uh, Memor- Racing Memorial Association, is doing a big event to uh, honor Ray Haroon uh, out at um, Memorial Park Cemetery in the flagship enterprises. And we're having a big event like we did for Bob Carey right. last, last year out there. And had a meeting about that last week. Hopefully we'll have more Good. information soon because a lot of folks don't know that Ray Haroon, the first winner of the Indianapolis 500, is actually buried in Memorial Park Cemetery yes. and was an Anderson native, Very good. which is pretty cool. So We have uh, pretty much wrapped up all 30 minutes of our time. Everybody come out and Promise see us Saturday. Come out Saturday and see us. If you're a competitor, come in, bring those cars. If you just want to watch, you're more than welcome to come out, sit in the pit bleachers and have fun and in this warm weather with us. That's right. For Gary Mong, I'm Rick Dawson. I appreciate you spending the time with us this evening, and we will be back here same time, same stations next week, and we'll see you at the track. Tune in next Tuesday night for another edition of Anderson Speedway's Track Talk on News Talk 1240 WHBU and the new 103.7 FM and on Muncie Sports Station 102.9 FM and 1340 AM. And for more information on Anderson Speedway, go to andersonspeedway.com.